Good morning. Happy Friday. Uh, my name is Peter Garonis. I'm an entrepreneur, licensed realtor, property manager, owner. And what I do in part is I gain information from resources, people that have far more experience in the fields and industries that, that I share the information of from books like the ones behind me. And I take all that information and I share it with you guys. And I do that in part for two main reasons actually. One is selfish. It helps me remember the content that I'm absorbing by sharing that information, by talking about it, I actually remember it better. And then two, and this is one a little bit more selfless, is it's a goal of mine to help people get from where they are somewhere along the trajectory of where they actually want to end up. And sharing the information I know will help you get there. So today I actually want to talk about real estate and I want to talk about specifically the news or the buzz of something that's in the pipeline and something that's in the works with CREA, the Canadian Real Estate uh, Association. And so basically CREA is the, the body, governing body of real estate in Canada. And so what's happening right now in the discussions that you might be hearing on the radio, you might be seeing on people's podcasts, you might be seeing on people's YouTube channel that are involved in real estate, that do this every single day, top performing realtors, top performing brokers, is that there is a pilot project happening right now with the intention of ultimately removing the idea of blind bidding. Now this is incredible news, this is crazy, and this is a potential game changer. So quickly, before we move on, let's explain or define what blind bidding is. So blind bidding is the idea or the notion that what's happening right now, in particular in our market here in Halifax, uh, in Nova Scotia, is that there are houses that are going for sale, the inventory is very low, there's a substantial number of buyers that are interested in our properties, and so basically houses are selling for far more than they're being listed at. Sometimes as high as 26% over ask, sometimes as high as 30 plus percent over ask, right? So hundreds of thousands of dollars of over. And so what happens in those multiple offer situations when the seller gets not one offer, but several, upwards of 12, 15, even 18 offers, and in some cases 50, um, is that each of those buyers does not know what the other buyer is offering, right? And so you're trying to play this cat and mouse game trying to determine as best as you can, both as a non-licensed realtor or, or a salesperson and as a real estate agent, trying to make sense of what is the likelihood that our offer will get accepted? How much over ask should I go for, right? And so that in essence is what is called blind bidding because the buyer has no idea what all of the other potential buyers are offering. Now there's reasons for that, and a couple of those reasons are from a licensing perspective. As a realtor, I'm obligated to offer fiduciary responsibilities to my seller or to my client. And so any information that is theirs that they don't feel obligated to share, I am not in my right to share that information. It's actually my fiduciary responsibility not to share that information. Um, and then of course the other reason is, uh, I'm, as a realtor, I'm expected to not impartial any of the other buyers um, or people that are interested, prospects alike, clients so to speak. So I'm not allowed to give one an advantage over the other. So by telling somebody what somebody else is offering and not telling everybody else, that's a disadvantage and I'm not allowed to do that. And so those are the two, two main reasons that blind bidding um, actually occurs. Okay, so the notion that I actually wanna talk about today and I'm building up to it, is that CREA has announced uh, a pilot project, more or less, where they are going to have an open bid platform or an open bid system. So what does that mean? Uh, the details obviously are not ironed out, the communication has not come down all the way of what that looks like, but the notion or the concept, guys, which is crazy, is that um, as a buyer, you will somehow, whether it's an app, whether it's a website, allowed to look at a house that you're interested in and make a bid or an offer on that house. But you will also be able to see if other people are making bids on the same house and if so, what their bids are actually coming in at. What does that mean? That in essence is going to be very much like an eBay situation, right? When you have something on the online that you're looking at, you wanna buy it and the bidding starts and you can actually see what other people are bidding and maybe there's a clock or time restraint on uh, how long you have to make a bid before the final bids are collected. And so the idea behind this is in hopes, I guess the motivation for Kriya to kind of take this approach is to 
um, control the out of, out of control or chaotic style bidding that has been happening in specifically in Halifax, specifically in Nova Scotia, okay? And so of course, look, there's always, anytime there's bids and multiple bids, um, there's a thing known as outliers, okay? And what an outlier is, is basically what it sounds like, where you might have a, a, a general group or cluster of offers that are very close and very competitive, right? They might be anywhere from $2,000 to $15,000 apart, but you have several of them, six, seven, or eight, and they're really in that, that cluster. But then you might have what's known as the outliers, where somebody might be offering, you know, right at ask, which might be, you know, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 lower than the cluster. And then you have somebody who comes in and drops one hundred and fifty dollars or $200,000 over asking price. And so those are what's known as outliers. And the idea of a transparent, open bidding system, as opposed to the blind bidding system that we have right now in Halifax and Dartmouth and in Nova Scotia, is that it will make for a far more uh, competitive but controlled type of market value on the houses that are happening. So there will be more information coming from me to you guys about this. Um, if you haven't heard about it yet, you're hearing it first, but it's been communicated now more formally in the last week or so. It's been talks over the last year that that's the direction that we wanted to take. I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts on that. If you're a buyer, if you're a seller, if you're just browsing, do you think that's going to help? Do you think that's going to improve how the process works? Um, and for realtors that might come across this, how do you think that's going to change the game? How do you think that's going to change the industry? Are we looking at realtors becoming less and less valuable where if someone can actually just open up their phone, see a listing, start bidding, knowing what everyone else is offering, look, what actual advantage might a top performing realtor provide now and what do those commissions look like and does the compensation change? So it's, a, it's an interesting topic but for everybody who's listening who's a consumer who's either looking to buy or looking to sell, this is something for you just to know is happening and to keep tabs on it and, have a, 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 and gain more information if you can from checking out my channel which if you haven't subscribed yet you need to smash the button right now so we can keep pumping out information like this so I can um, allot time to provide uh, free value and YouTube uh, information around real estate, mindset, and all that stuff with you guys. My name is Peter Gronis. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a licensed realtor. I'm a property manager, among other things. And what I do in part is I obtain information from people that are smarter than I am, people that are far more experienced than I am, from people that have spent lifetimes studying topics and discussions like the books behind me. I take that information and I send it your way. And I do that for two reasons, guys. One is a selfish one. The more I talk about a topic, the more I talk about a concept, the more I remember it and the better I understand it. And so that's important to me. But I also do it for a selfless reason. And the reason is to help you get from where you are right now, professionally, personally, spiritually, any one of those categories, somewhere along the line in a trajectory trajectory that looks something like this to where you want to be if you haven't subscribed subscribe now hope you guys are doing really really well appreciate your time thank you take care